It's January 6, 1994. Robin Williams' performance as Mrs. Doubtfire is all the rage. Hello! Mariah Carey's hero is soothing ear canals across America, and a beloved figure skater is about to get her leg whacked and dreams nearly shattered. Hey guys, I'm Tracy Stump, and the only thing I find more tubular than the 90s are the crimes that happened in the 90s. So let's talk to the celebrities who lived through them. This is the 1990s, totally scandalous. Today we're skating through the insanity of Tanya Harding and the cheap shot against Nancy Kerrigan. Who better to take us through this saga than the fast-talking woman who played six on the hit show Blossom, Jenna Vonoy. No, I'm not that kind of person. It's like when you go to school and everybody's wearing the kind of clothes that you want and I don't have that kind of money and you don't have that kind of money and now with dad gone, I mean, I'm not trying to blend this on the divorce, but we just don't have that kind of money. Tanya and Nancy happened while you were filming Blossom. It kind of makes me feel a little old. Of course, with like the movie coming out, with Itania coming out recently and all of that, it sort of makes it feel like it was just yesterday. Yesterday was really in actuality quite a, bit, quite a long time ago already. Figure skating was the first winter sport to appear in the Olympics, making its debut in the Summer Games of 1908. And 86 years later, it endured one of the most scandalous moments in sports history. So where were you when you heard about the whack heard around the world? I was probably at the craft service table chugging coffee and uh, and and eating donuts and getting all sugared up for, for my fast talking stint. He told Nancy, who told Lisa, who told Susie, who told me, that Dennis told the boys in the locker room that you and he had sex at the movies the other night. We would like watch the monitor above the craft service table and, and, and catch all the news. It starts with rising star Nancy Kerrigan, born in Massachusetts in 1969. She started skating at the ripe old age of six. Isn't it insane to think that you're six years old and have a career? Yeah, I, I started acting when I was six, so I so I sort of see it. But when you miss a triple axel, like that's it. Like no Olympics for you, you know what I mean? When I miss a line, we get to refilm the scene and, and it still ends up on the air. By nine, she won the Boston Open and in 1992, she won the bronze for the Olympic games. But she had a rival, a skater that the American public had never seen before. Tanya Harding! Born in 1970 and raised in Portland, Oregon, she began skating at the age of three. Could she tie her skates at three is my question. Exactly. Was she skating become, because someone said, you know, I'll give you an Elmo if you do a triple axel? Like, you never know. Tanya wasn't your typical figure skater. She didn't come from money, so her mom put a ton of pressure on her success. Tanya's upbringing resulted in her becoming an unconventional skater, shocking judges with her unique wardrobe and music choices, and Tanya put it all into getting that gold. Tanya drops out of school to dedicate her entire life to skating. That's putting all of your eggs in one basket. How do you feel about that? When you're on a career path where you know that there is a way to be successful and that everybody is encouraging you to follow that path, everybody's dream and your dream, I think, sometimes start to merge. Tanya's hard work paid off and she placed number one at the International Skate America competition. And two years later, not only did she become the first American woman to land the triple axel in competition, she did it twice. Ice skating had kind of never really seen anyone quite like her. Like she was a little bit rough around the edges. Of course she was graceful on the ice, but the sort of off the ice, there was this very, edgy other side of the tracks feel to her that, that we'd never seen. Over the next two years, both skaters are completely focused on one thing, the 1994 Norway Olympics. Well, Tanya's actually kind of focused on two things, the Olympics and this guy named Jeff Galuli. More than a guy, she loved him. They had started dating when she was 17, and when they married, three and a half years later, he became her manager. He's by her side, leading up to the 1994 US Figure Skating Championships. That's gonna determine who makes the Olympic team. Do you understand how big this is? All right, it's January 6, 1994, and Nancy is coming off the ice from a practice session when, thwack! An unidentified man comes from behind Nancy and hits her over and over again, right near the knee, leaving her screaming. Why? Why? I don't know, it's a hard, hard black stick. Feels like something straight out of The Sopranos. Yeah, right, except Tony Soprano would never have botched it. The media goes nuts. You really couldn't go anywhere without this story being right in front of you, right? Like the news, tabloids, talk shows, SNL. Tanya Harding. Tanya Harding. Tanya Harding. I have nothing to say about Nancy Kerrigan. It was everywhere. Do you remember that? I, do. I mean, you go to the grocery store to pick up a gallon of milk. Nancy and Tanya. We all sort of get obsessive 
about about controversy, and that was a staple. Yeah, they were the old school Taylor and Kanye. So luckily, there's no permanent damage, but Nancy still can't compete. Who wins the championships and gets a spot competing in the Olympics? Tanya Harding. Just a few days after the attack, a Portland minister claims he heard a tape of two men discussing the hit with another man. One was Tanya's bodyguard, Sean Eckhart, and the other, a man named Jeff Galuli. And this is where it gets juicy. Tanya's personal bodyguard, Sean Eckhart, confesses to the crime, implicating Galuli and two friends, and they're all charged with conspiracy to assault Kerrigan. An FBI investigation begins, and everyone has a different story. Tanya talks to the feds and blames Galuli. Galuli throws Tanya under the bus and says that she knew about the whole thing all along. So Tanya releases a press statement denying knowledge of the attack ahead of time. Within the next few days, I learned that some persons that were close to me may have been involved. But then, there's the envelope. A restaurant worker sees a piece of paper with Nancy Kerrigan's skating rink address on it, and a handwriting expert says that it's Tanya's handwriting. Despite the controversy, Tanya is still allowed to compete in the Olympics, and due to the bizarre circumstances, Nancy is given a spot to compete as well. And with the whole world watching, the two go for the gold. Tanya performs first, and duh, there's drama. But Nancy, on the other hand, performs a beautiful program, scoring her the silver. And Tanya, well, a less respectable eighth place, but still beautiful. In March, Tanya pleads guilty to not fully cooperating with the police after the attack and is sentenced to three years probation, 500 hours of community service, and a $160,000 fine. And worst of all, she's stripped of all her titles and permanently banned from figure skating forever. And to this day, she maintains she knew nothing about the attacks beforehand. While Tanya hasn't made headlines for figure skating ever since, she didn't leave the public eye. In 94, Penthouse distributed an old Galuli Harding sex tape. Tanya went on to have a brief career as a professional boxer and appeared on a variety of TV shows. Hi, I'm Tanya Harding. I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I'm playing for Nova. We've all fallen on hard times in our lives. We've all been in a position where the choices we made were, were the best choices in that moment. Now, I respect the fact that she knows what her niche is and she's using it to continue moving forward, whatever that looks like. Nancy, on the other hand, has a fruitful future as America's sweetheart. She tours and performs with champions on ice, Broadway on ice, and Dancing with the Stars, but even she can't escape the media glare. At a Disney World parade, she's caught on mic, supposedly dissing Mickey Mouse. Just because you're perceived as the girl next door doesn't mean that you don't have flaws and imperfections um, like everyone else. And then just last year, the story gets a second life when the movie I, Tanya is released and it's nominated for three Oscars. Tanya Harding's back in the spotlight, walking the red carpet at the Golden Globes. Finally, a moment of triumph after more than two decades of hard knocks. This story was insane. It was everywhere. Why was everybody so obsessed with this? Well, I mean, it had everything, right? Like the jealousy, the ambition, the revenge, the sequins. <laughs> there was like so many sequins. I think the lesson just in a single word is perseverance. Both of them are doing everything that they can to rise above that situation, to create the, the best out of their life that they can. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Your stories about Blossom were so great. You're so charming and lovely, and I really appreciate it. She can't be charming.